Hello, hello, it's the MG Road Music Show, and as you can tell from the background, yes, I have left uni for the summer and I'm back at my humble abode where I shall be recording my videos from here on out for a few months. And also, I'm very big on record collecting. It's something I've been majorly into for the past, past five years. And it's something that has frequently been a background part of my video, but videos, but for this time, I'd like to bring it to the forefront, like considering every other major music review channel on YouTube, most especially The Needle Drop, have done videos where they've gone through each of their respective record collections, I've decided I'd like to do the same. Although I'd rather more so phrase it as a record recollection. Get it? Because like, record, collection, recollection. I just didn't want to call it like Vinyl Update Vol 1 or something like that. Without further ado, let's get on with this. My idea of this first one being to just go through my most recent purchases since I couldn't think of a order that would be best and to get a sufficient amount of records I'd be happy to talk about in with this video. So it's only appropriate to start with my most recent purchase and one of the things I, that is great with record collection is sometimes to truly like own music in a physical format you want it because of like a personal or like nostalgic reason that goes with it. So just how records are a good way to remember concerts have been to. So like whenever I frame a record, if I've seen that artist in concert, I put the ticket in the frame, like this one here for Tears of Fears. Record collecting is partly about bringing that personal aspect back into music. So like the idea that it's your possessions, your collection. So as in making it all that all the more personal is all the more better. Having good memories that go with the albums so that you particularly more so want to own them in a physical format and just feel more connected with them or carry them as a piece of memorabilia for your life. Sort of like, say, a photo album, how an album can take you back to particular points in your life. But I don't know the pretentious wondering. That is part of the reason behind my most recent purchase, Taylor Swift, Evermore. And the reason I got this is because, as, as, as you could tell, I was in uni earlier this year. And, but there was, it was a fantastic time, but there was a sadder part to it in that it was the last time I'd be seeing a few of my uni mates within uni as while I was on my third year or as I was on my second year this year, they were on their third year. And so it was the time to say goodbye to living with them in uni and as a way to sort of like remember those great, all those great times I had with them, I decided to get what was our favourite collective album whilst we would like sit in the kitchen and chat about whatever and play music in the background. And it would be this one, which I think is also a fantastic one just to have on vinyl all round because it's fantastic aesthetically. Like Taylor very much drew on cottage core for this album. And so that really comes through in just how aesthetically cozy and aesthetically pleasing the artwork is. Like, like particularly in her, like the images where you have like Taylor in top notch designer fashion in the elegant field landscapes, particularly more effectively done on the folklore cover, I say, of the black and white, making it more dramatic. But on the whole, I'd say I prefer this as an album in and of itself, which is why I got this one more so. And as you can see, they have the fantastic black and white photography right throughout. And also a really nice uh, independent record store special edition with the green vinyl, which is really nice and adds to the collectability of this first edition. Very nice black and white interior covers of Miss Taylor. Also brilliantly, one thing that's become more frequent as of recent, anime soundtracks on vinyl. Because I think we're now at the point in time where anime is firmly a part of the mainstream now. And so there is now a market for this sort of thing, and not at, or at least add not as small a niche. And so there is profit seen in making these things available. My favourite of my two anime vinyls, easily being the one for the Fooly Cooly soundtrack here. Really nicely, fantastic presentation all round, largely thanks to it being distributed by alltheanime.com one of the main websites and companies for distributing anime soundtracks on vinyl. They've also done ones for Attack on Titan and Beastars. And as ever, they are always like really fantastic with the sleek and stylish presentation, which is definitely required for a show like Fooly Cooly, where it is all about the really sleek, aesthetically pleasing and out there art style. Yeah, this one really great with like little slip inserts throughout which have like great artwork from the show all mixed in and easily this one one of the absolute greatest 
anime soundtracks. Does a great job at, cre- at capturing sort of really sort of like early two thousands Brit popish post punk revival sort of vibe, which is really great by the Japanese indie band The Pillows, who are really underrated at. I can see why a lot of people, at least in the West, regard this as one of the all time greatest Japanese albums. Although, even though they are now more commonplace, they still can be quite hard and pricey to get by. Like, some of them are quite widely distributed, but other are like, tend to be like 35 quid and very limited editions, such as this one. I remember getting this one from my birthday and then straight after checking the alltheanime.com website and seeing that this was now sold out. So it then suddenly dawned on me, oh my god, did I just buy the last coffee in the UK? Although thankfully it's, ava- it's back available now if you all want to get it. But it is very, very, it's specifically on that website. Search for this on Amazon and HMV and local record shops. But it seems to be exclusively through the alltheanime.com website. Currently I'll put that back together later. And one thing to be aware of though, the version of Last Dinosaur on this isn't the full version, it's the 30 second version which was used throughout the TV programme because this is like a soundtrack so they only use the TV size version so just so so that you're aware of that if you get this and you aren't caught horribly surprised to find that a great track is only the short version on here but on the whole absolutely fantastic soundtrack and a fantastic release by alltheanime.com taking it away again But in terms of the other longer-awaited release, Evangelion, of one of the most iconic anime soundtracks of all time, with what a lot of people call, like, the most iconic anime openings and endings of all time, with Cruel Angel's instantly recognisable Cruel Angel's thesis and Fly Me to the Moon. But, of course, along with a lot of the great tracks from the end of Evangelion, including the suitably laid-back but depressive uh, Com Susa Todd. But also... Uh, some more great classic chilled soul in the same vibe as Fly Me to the Moon in the track um, was it? If I Can't Be Yours by Thanatos stripping is underrated. But again, as with the Fooly Cooly vinyl, the presentation is great with this one. Less so in like the sleekness and the inserts, but more so in terms of, like the sheer like brightness and vibrancy of this vinyl cover. Like you see like the really bright and colourful, aesthetically pleasing cover, but wait till you see how these vinyls look. Gorgeous, bright purple and pink with the splotches right throughout. And the same with this one. Beautiful. Now, part of the reason I hugely wanted to get the Fooly Kuri vinyl is because that one was going through a phase when I was hugely interested into the shows and history of the Adult Swim network and Furikuri being one of the core shows that was played by Adult Swim as part of Toonami back in the early 2000s. But another part of the art, another artist who is hugely synonymous with Adult Swim, who I was hugely interested in because of this, and who liked the Furikuri vinyl, I got this vinyl as part of my 21st birthday, Tyler the Creator, Igor, which easily one of my favourite recent albums in terms of album cover. I love like the bright pink aesthetic, which hugely reflects the more neo-soul pop-based sound of the album compared to Tyler's other work. Just how striking it is and eye-catching. And also that's one of the great things about vinyl, you truly get to appreciate the artwork that goes behind album covers, particularly in the case of you can sometimes spot smaller details, you don't when it's just a small image on your iPhone. I mean, case in point, I don't know if you can see that. I didn't realise that it actually says Igor on him in like faint black lettering. I don't know how we could see that there, but that's a detail that is completely like invisible when it when it's like a present and presented in a smaller manner. But yeah, the whole aesthetic of this era of Tyler was fantastic. Like it was just so classy. Like every every single clothes he wore, every item of clothing he wore in the music video was like top notch designer fashion, like everything about this album in terms of the aesthetic felt like it was from a designer sleek fashion show that you could see him going down the court catwalk uh, along. Like even like the design of the centre part of the vinyl looks like it could be the sort of colours and patterning you'd see aligning a Lacoste ga- or Gantt shop. And also, one of the things I always love with vinyl, posters. Because they're something that could be like quite hard to find good quality ones of. Like it's normally only in like indie music shops or say as you're picking up merchandise at concert stalls. And one of because 
if you go and like look for them on eBay, you often get like really cheaply printed ones or bootleg ones. It's like I said, they're just so difficult to come come across cheap, good quality ones, and so it's great that vinyls provide the opportunity to access them. Just a really nice extra tidbit to fans, which I love. I mean, case in point, my greatest and biggest poster came from the Once Upon in Hollywood soundtrack vinyl. I mean, when you get a gigantic hefty thing like this just for free with your vinyl, that is really good value for money.